this is the Raunda Selva right here. It's absolutely magical. It's one of the last rivers that we have in Norway that actually runs more or less free from, from source to sea and it's so beautiful and it's so varied and it's, yeah, it's good. I got to paddle it for the first time 20 years ago. It changed my life and that was what I did and it shaped what I did and it made me move back to Boss where I came from and grew up and all my priorities in life basically. Just going out there and like disconnecting. That's, that's what I really love about that valley in both the summer and the winter. It's, um, it's a unique place, I think. Well, this is my favorite river in Voss, uh, in Norway, uh, quite possibly in the world. And I've, uh, I've seen quite a lot of rivers around the place over the years. But uh, for me now, this river is my, my home and my first choice if I want to um, go, go paddling or go for a swim or play with the kids. It's fun. It's really nice. It's super nice and green and you can do so much fun stuff with it. I've seen many rivers around the world, but this one is definitely quite special. It's, uh, it's a river you can drink of. It's just so clean and all the nature around is crazy. So why I moved to Voss is definitely for this river, for the Ronde Island. Just like right now, we paddled with Anne again, and, and uh, it's an after work paddle for us, but it's world class white water. That's a really good, reason for, for me to stay here. It's not about kayaking really, it's about learning what this river has in value in itself without be, me being a toy rider and I think that's, that's, that's something very important for me to, to communicate. Well, you know, people people are afraid. People are afraid. They uh, <laughs> we've been building on floodplains, and people are afraid of losing their properties. You know, losing their personal possessions. You know, and because uh, uh, one thing we do know about this climate crisis is uh, the the floods are going to come more often, and they're going to get bigger and bolder. And so, yeah, pe people are afraid, and they think there's like one solution to this. And now there's going on a local election here in Voss and everyone, or it's a big, it's a winning statement to say we need to deal with the flood now. And then everyone's like, yeah, I don't know if everybody says that, but it's, it's a typical dynamic in politics, right? Where it's really hard to say it is flooding, we need to take time to find the good solutions so we can still keep living here but we don't destroy this amazing river that has been protected like 30 years ago for a good reason. And this is one of the last um, undeveloped waterways in Western Norway. And one of the wildest parts of the world is one of the last bits of wilderness. So I don't see how we can even consider developing it more than it is. 
since the 70s, the world has lost 70% of their wild animals. And, uh, Norway has about 5% of the land area left, which is wilderness, despite what people think. Uh, so it's just a small piece which is untouched and not modified. Um, up in the high areas you have the specialized uh, animals like wild reindeer, you have the mountain foxes, and a lot of tiny little moss which nobody has heard about. And you're kind of fragmenting the habitats of some of these species that are now red listed and threatened. When the fight is about the single river, the one river, you can always mobilize enough reasons why you should dam it. Um, and in that way, nature will always lose. Because there's always going to be really good reasons that why we should just dam this one. Yeah, we should, yeah, we should protect rivers, but we should just dam this one because it's inconvenient for us. You build a dam and, um, yeah, you earn some million kroner, and which is not going to be anywhere enough to fund any uh, flood prevention, which is the goal of the project. But we won't have this <laughs> last waterway, one of the most beautiful waterways in the world. It'll be gone, lost, before anyone knew what it was worth. Well, um, rivers are linear systems, okay? So what happens upstream affects what happens downstream, and some, sometimes the reverse, what happens downstream in terms of uh, fish passage is going to obviously affect the upper reaches of the river. So that's the benefit of a free-flowing river. It, it, it's a free-flowing river has a better chance of maintaining its integrity in terms of its hydrological functioning, its sediment transport, and its ecology. If you start fragmenting rivers through putting dams on them or abstracting lots of water and affecting how much flow reaches downstream, you start to compartmentalize it, you start to fragment it, and its natural functioning is going to be impacted. The unseen changes are the things that then come next, so the trapping of sediment upstream of the dam wall, you know, it, sediment will come into the upstream end of the reservoir, it will, there'll be some transport beneath the reservoir su surface, but most of it's going to be trapped behind the dam wall and it will start to build up on the reservoir floor, start to reduce the capacity of the reservoir. That sediment isn't then getting downstream. And as a consequence, the river downstream can scour its bed, it, uh, the range of particle sizes on the riverbed can change, that may affect the spawning habitat for salmon um, or other, other, other fish species. Um, there's less sediment being supplied downstream to deltas and estuaries, therefore that can lead to coastal erosion. If you change the flow hydrology of a river through damming and you change the sediment supply and you affect the, the basis for fish habitat and fish spawning, you put climate change impacts such as flood and drought and, and air temperature rises on top of that, it's a compounding effect, right? You've got, and, and, it, and it just makes other aspects of climate change worse. What's the soul does, uh, what they call like a ice uh, leaves, like an outdoor destination, you know? That's what they sell themselves on. That's what they've made themselves on. They have this iconic kind of way about them, right? You can't sell that anymore. It's hypocrisy if you, if you dam this river because everything is connected. And they, like, we struggle in the districts to have qualified people to do important jobs for society. Like you struggle to get psychologists and doctors and nurses and teachers and engineers and you know all these important roles. And what is it the river brings to us? It's psychologists, it's doctors, it's nurses, it's teachers, it's engineers, hydrologists, like. So I think it's, it's important to, to not just look at the river as an inconvenience when it floods, but to also realize that actually it creates a lot of value for the local society and uh, in bringing like, highly educated people to the, to the town and also um, loads of people move here and they're like, actually, there are no jobs here <laughs> unless you have those specific like government kind of jobs and they start companies and they create, you know, in town um, value that didn't exist before they came, you know. The guy who runs the hostel in Voss 
they had massive flooding in the first huge flood there eight years ago. Massive. Like they had the whole first floor, which is kind of a basement, but the whole first floor was completely flooded. Uh, and this year they had this much water. Or last, yeah, last fall they had this much water because they've done things since last time. You know, like they put in one of these valves in the pipes that makes the water only able to go one way instead of back in as well. I know there's a shop in town, they have a sensor. As soon as the water's rising a certain level, bump, bump, the bilge pump starts coming on. You know, like it's simple things like these. Whereas a lot of people in town haven't done anything. So then how can you expect uh, that everything's going to be okay next time something the same thing comes around you know you need to be proactive you know and then you restore nature you move the things that can be moved and you look at okay what what's this going to cost compared to this big huge one thing i don't know i would like to at least for that to have been looked at properly 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 before we start you know ruining the river and and by extension the fjord as well which the river is then supposed to go out into unfiltered just like high water or high mountain water straight into a fjord which has salt water obviously which is a whole other debate but yeah i i think many dams their lifespan is going to be significantly less than a, than 100 years um that's not even talking about the the wear and tear on the concrete which we've seen examples haven't we in recent years even in the uk where cracks have appeared in dam walls and they've had to evacuate communities downstream because the fear of dam collapses. There's been examples in the US as well. They've tried to go for this river since the 60s and it's still here. It's been fought by people volunteering, you know, like doing this on their free time and it's been won every single time. And it's not like, that's not small. That's not a small thing when someone goes, for, like when a power company goes for a river, that's not a small thing. And still people have won that fight on their free time. Like, don't underestimate the power of people who love a river. Like, don't underestimate that. <laughs> yeah. Protect Rendal Selva. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> sad to think about eh? Like I've seen that people that spend time on rivers they get affected by it. It goes into your soul and rivers rivers are a part of the human existence. There's so much to lose and so little to gain from it you know. If you care about something fight for it. It's worth, worth all of your effort. I think that nature should just be let alone. Because nature was here first, before us. It's like if we were playing a game and then someone else comes and wants to join and they can't just change the whole game just because they came.